Welcome, disc golfers, to the Veradisc coverage of the final nine of the Morton, Illinois, Ledgestone Insurance Open at Northwoods Park. Tournament directors Nate Heinhold and Johnny Harrison presenting this event. Final nine players today are going to be Nico LeCastro, sponsored by Prodigy, after shooting a 45 in the fourth round, which was rated 1058. Sitting in second place, sitting at 203 strokes, is Tyler Horn, sponsored by Discraft. One stroke behind that is Tim Barham, sponsored by Discraft. And also sitting at 204 is Matt Dollar, sponsored by Innova. Payouts today, first place will be receiving $3,000 Second place, $2,000. Third place, $1,350. And fourth place will be taking home a cool $1,000. Brett, do you have any final comments before we start the round? No, I'm excited to see these guys play. I don't know, get to see, I really haven't seen Tim Barham throw at all, so I'm excited to see him play. And uh, Matt Dollar, I haven't seen him in Illinois or the Midwest often. So I'm excited to see those two guys play, and I, I expect to see a pretty good show. Um, Nico's got a, a decent sized lead here. And the final nine is going to be taking place on the, the Mor Norton North Northwood course. We're going to be playing eight of the holes that are on the course from the long tees, but one of the holes is actually a safari hole. It's going to be hole six to hole seven's basket. So look forward to that as the coverage begins. The final nine is going to begin here on actually uh, hole four long. This is an option hole. You can either bail it out on the right side or just throw a confident shot right up the middle. The only way to go for a birdie is throwing up the middle unless you've got a really good forehand roller shot. Nico's got a pretty good size lead here, Kenny. Um, he's got to feel confident. He goes up the middle and explodes off the tree and he got a really good kick to the right side. The worst thing here, Kenny, is a hard kick left into the rough, and you bring super big numbers into play. Here comes Tyler. Tyler Horn, sponsored by Discraft. He's been in this final several years in a row now and has played really good at this tournament. Up the middle, explodes off the tree, and again, fortunate he did not kick super far left. He's still going to have a chance for three from there. And here's Tim Barham. I'm excited to see him throw. He's had a great weekend. I have not personally seen him play. I know. I see what he's got here. Looks like he might be rolling, lining up a either a forehand or a forehand roller. Looks like he's rocking his homie shirt today as well. Fly on, homie. You attempted the forehand roller there. You know, it's... Wasn't what he's looking for, but that mistake, he should have a pretty wide open approach from the right side there. And after a pretty solid final round, we got Matt Dollar rounding out the lead card for the final nine. Yeah, he snuck in, and I know Johnny McRae has been playing some great golf this year and was pretty disappointed not to make this final nine. But, uh, again, I'm excited to see Matt play. He, I've never seen him in uh, Illinois, and here he goes with the sidearm roller. What a beautiful shot. And he is going to have a look for a birdie, too, here, Kenny. That was executed perfectly. Never seen anything like that on this hole. Here's Matt on the left side. Or, I'm sorry, Tyler. That's a good hyzer. Puts it up close and should be able to walk away with his three. And, again, Nico's got to feel good right now. He's got a big lead. He should be pretty pretty loose and made his mistake out there and look like he's going to get up and down for his three, too. Here's Tim's approach. Keeps it out right, fades back in, and should have a putt for three. And oh, and Matt just slides out left side. That was for his birdie. He really wanted to capitalize that and keep it rolling. And looks like we got some uh, putts for three here, Kenny. No birdie twos. 
solid in the center, and it's, this is pretty routine for all these. There's a reason these guys are on the lead card in the final nine. They have not missed putts like this for the whole weekend, and I don't expect them to miss putts within this range. And there's Tyler tapping in, and Matt's going to tap in. Tyler's got a stroke on both Tim and Matt, so he's just got to hold that out for the rest of this final nine unless he plans on making a move on Nico. So there we go. We knew that was going to be a tough birdie, too, and nobody gets one. We're all even after one. And Now we're going to move on to hole five. This is the most famous hole in central Illinois. A, a sidearm's really the only way to get up there for an eagle, too. You know it's a sidearm hole when Nico's throwing a sidearm because you don't see him go to the sidearm as his preferred shot. And that looked pretty darn good to the layup Looks like zone. he laid that one up to the top of the hill so we can pitch it down for a par three. Comes Tyler Horn, another sidearm. Little low, but man, he got some the Joliet shimmy roll going. And uh, he should have a look too. You know, Kenny, Tim has had a huge following from Michigan at this tournament. They brought in a monstrous bus. And there he had a a pretty awesome crowd following him and pumping him up during this finals and there it is he he gets the skip off the top and gets down to the second tier and should be able to make it happen for a excited to see this thumber that Matt's about to throw looks like he threw a perfect into the lab zone as well as he's been playing these guys I'm expecting these guys to get up and down Tyler with a great shot to the green, skips deep of the basket, but should have a putt. And Nico's through a perfect drive. So pretty to routine approach shot and just comes up a tad bit short. And Matt just explodes and drops and there goes the birdie. Tim got to the bottom. Getting to the bottom of this hole is not easy. That was a great shot. No, and that's really what you want to do on this hole, Kenny, if you're go if you're getting aggressive, is have it skip off the top and trickle down. Anywhere to the bottom is a gives you a really good chance of birdie. Here's Matt. This water down here was ca played as casual, so it was not out of bounds. And here's Matt's approach. Should be taking a par four right there. Here's Nico's putt for birdie. This is no gimme here, Kenny. He's not putted well this weekend. Knocks it home. Keeps his lead, protects it, moving on. And Tyler just taps it in. There we go. We got Nico with a three, Tyler with a three, Tim with a three, and Matt Dollar walking off with a, a par four. Now the next hole that we're moving on to is actually the only safari hole of the final nine. We'll be playing from hole six tee pad to hole seven's basket. It's a par four. And it's a, it's a good lefty shot off the tee or a right-hand sidearm. There's no point in trying to go for the eagle here because there's just too much going on. It's not a bad idea to lay up a mid-range about 350 feet. Yeah, Nico is not going to like that shot right there, Kenny. Just took the birdie out of play. And Tyler is in some big trouble right here. Early tree, he's got a long ways to go and just brought a big number into play. Here comes Tim with the sidearm. This is... The preferred play on this hole. I actually think they should convert this into a permanent hole and add one of the old holes back there between uh, 15 and 16. And I, I really think that would make this course perfect. And he explodes a late tree and kicks down in the rough, and he's going to have 
his work cut out for him to get a par four. That's on the tee, trying to decide what disc he's going to throw, likely deciding if he's going to throw a forehand or a thumber. Any mini, miny, mo? And he fools us and goes with the backhand. And that's going to be pretty nice there. Got through the cabbage, landed in the fairway, and he should have a look. And here's here's Tyler. He he is in some big trouble. Gets down the fairway, but he's still not in good position to to get a par four there, Kenny. He might as well chalk a five on the board and stop the bleeding. Now, Nico got best dressed today for the final nine, put on a nice button-down shirt and a sweater. Hopefully that'll be that'll be good for the pictures they take later. I, I'm digging it. He, uh, he can pull that off. I definitely could not pull that look off. Down at the bottom of this valley is just brutal. You can see the opening there to the right where you want to get through that wall of trees where the original pin was. You just saw it on the left. And here's Tim down at the bottom of the valley, too. For the original hole, six, he's looking good. But we're not going to six. He's just looking to get this out in the other fairway. And maybe he's trying to punch through. Oh, yeah, he's punching through, Kenny. This looks like a bunch of cabbage to me. Here's Matt, best driver of the group. Had the look, and what a great forehand. And he's looking to get his birdie three and pick up some strokes. Looks like Nico's got the stretch out. There's a good forehand. That's, that's the way it's done. Limit the damage, get up and down. We got Tim. Does not look like that throw into the wall of trees worked out well. Gets up and down. Actually, he did get through the trees, but he went left of the pin down to the bottom of the valley. And here's Tyler chaining out. Pretty good run. But that hole, I tell you what, for a safari hole, for that little change, Kenny, that just made it. Talk about a deadly hole. And, oh, man, and Nico, that's what I'm talking about. The putting has been Nico. just... Great putt hit right off the pole. Really can't ask for much Just, more of a putt than that. He has really struggled with the putting, though, Kenny. It's, you know, sometimes it's contagious. You get a couple throughout the weekend that don't go down, and it's just you can't settle in. It's a good thing he had a five-stroke lead going into the finals here. So that's unfortunate. Yeah, and Tyler five that hole, and Tim took a four as well. So he, he lost some ground on Tim, but it wasn't deadly. Uh, the next hole of the final nine is actually a hole eight from the long tee. This is really a brutal hole. The whole way down, there's nothing harder than throwing a straight 400-foot shot. As Taylor Samala would say, throw it down the tube. And there, I mean, it, it looks so easy from here, but when you're standing on that tee committing to this shot, it's super difficult. Once you get off the fairway, you're really in trouble. The, this hole just super difficult to get a to get a two. You're just hoping to walk off with a three, and you could have some big numbers come into play with an early tree. Tim throws a forehand. It's fading out right side, which is not the worst spot. It has really opened up down there, and he might be able to get up and down from there, Kenny. Let's see if Nico can shake off this putt and throw a good shot, solid shot down the middle. Almost looks like he's got a mid-range disc in his hand. And he does play it safe, Kenny. He's took the big number out of play, threw it down halfway. You know, you figure if you throw it 200 feet and you throw it 200 feet, you tap in for three and walk away. Smart shot, not going to take a big number there. And there it is. Tyler hits the early left, kicks left, and he's got his work cut out for him again. 
we got some Guns N' Roses Welcome to the Jungle kicking up over here because he's been in it twice in a row. What a great shot. Forehand roller from that spot and got quite a ways down the fairway, Kenny. Notice the theme today between that fourth round and this final nine of how many forehand and forehand rollers are needed on this course. It was a great approach shot. And another great approach shot. That's how that's how he you plays keep this hole perfectly. I agree. A couple he couple shots right off the middle for an easy drop in three. Protects his lead. You know, that's the key. He he had a big lead. He didn't have to do anything special. He just get the three and move on. These guys are running out of holes to play. And he's got a sizable lead. Tim really needs his putt. Just like to give a quick shout out to Doug Payne, one of the local Peoria guys. Real good player out there. Throws a rock really well. Just want to say what's up, Doug. Yeah, Doug's an awesome guy. Played a lot of rounds with him. If you're ever in Peoria, look him up. He'll give you a guided tour around the courses. And here we go, Nico. He's definitely taking his time. He missed this one on the last hole. Don't take this for granted. And money. So Nico threes right there. Protected over Tim. Tim threed. Tyler's trying to save his, his par right here. And he does. So right there, Nico with a three. Tyler with a four. Tim with a three. And Matt with a four. Assuming Tim makes this putt, which he hasn't missed all weekend. And Tim's good to complete the fourth hole, the final nine. The fifth hole is on hole nine from the long tee pad. This is the hardest par three on the course, except for hole 17. Deuces on this hole for a 975 plus rated player are about 3% likely hole. It's that hard. The statistics don't lie. Yeah, this sets up really well for a, a, a dominant forehand player. And I look, this is a hole made for Tim if he wants to make up some ground. And he throws a really nice shot. And he's going to have a look for a birdie here, Kenny. If you get off the fairway at all on this hole, it's pretty much an automatic bogey. Especially if you're on the left side. That is jail. The right side's a lot better. He put the pressure on Nico here, and Nico hangs it left. And he's going to be in some trouble right here. That short and left is, it's got some dents, but we'll see what he can do from there. Here comes Matt. We saw him in the fourth round. Throws a backhand. And I can assume it's not by the basket, Kenny. Couldn't tell from this angle. Looks like it's by the poison ivy to me. A lot of poison ivy in the Peoria area, so if you're ever down there, make sure you get your prednisone early. And Tyler's short left as well. Tyler's trying to get off this theme and get one in the fairway, Kenny. It just shows that you can play awesome all weekend, and this course is its punishing if you get off. Nico's off on the left side. That's that's the worst side to be on. So hopefully he can put one up close to the basket. He's left himself with some work to do here, Kenny. Here's Nico again. Tell you what, with Tim up there putting for two, Nico really has to make something happen here. Or this could become a, a ball game again. I thought Nico had this wrapped up, but it's not looking that way. We got Tyler coming out of the rough. Puts it up by the basket and he just he just wants to get out of these woods at this point. Matt Dollar's long putt for birdie two here.
gives it a run, comes a little short, but should be a pretty easy three. And here's Nico. This is not a high percentage putt, and he's putting for a four here, Kenny. It's looking pretty focused. And he doesn't even give it a chance. He did not want to fly by on that fast green. And he's going to he's gonna take a five there. And here we go. T this could make it a ball game here, Kenny. He's putt Tim's putting for a deuce. He bangs it home, and the crowd is excited over here. And he has just cut that lead. It is now only a two-stroke lead, Kenny. Yeah, Tim just picked up three strokes on Nico on one hole. Puts him within two of the lead. We've got four to go, and this is, all of a sudden, this has become a race. I, I literally thought this was done, and now Nico's just got to hit this one. He's got to be feeling the pressure. And it's in the heart. He walks off. You know, to give him some credit, he looks pretty calm. We've seen Nico just explode in the past. And over at Pekin earlier this weekend, he missed a putt and smashed it in the chains and was on total blow-up mode. So he's pretty calm. But when you have a five-stroke lead and it's still two, it's pretty easy to stay calm. Yeah, we're more than halfway done with the final nine here. Moving on to hole 13. This is a very long hole with a low ceiling. A lot of players like to throw the roller here. Gives them a chance. If you want to learn how to throw a roller, this is the hole to do it. Shank it in the ground and let it go. Tim doesn't quite stand it up, and he just took his chance at a birdie three away. There's, It's impossible to get a, get a three from where he just threw it to. Although the roller is the preferred shot here, it can be challenging because the, the grass is a little tall and the ground is pretty rough on this hole. So you will see a lot of the rollers kick off to the right or left. There's Matt with a perfect, the perfect shot. He's clear of the right side trees. And again, I am assuming he's going to get up and down because he's done it all weekend. Here comes a, a crush from Tyler Horn. Nice seasoned one that he flips up. And watch that baby go. You know, short and left isn't good, but that was a pretty good roller, and he should have a look. We'll see. And here comes just a uh, – I have a feeling he's just going to unleash this one, Kenny. He took a few extra steps back, so he's really looking to unload here. If it sneaks through, the crowd's still watching, and it's still going. That was mammoth. Watching. watching. And it must have been good because here's the replay. This was a mammoth roller, Kenny. He misses all the left side trees, and it's still standing up. Even in the thick grass, it's still rolling. That is That should be just an easy three. I bet you that was a 450-foot to 500-foot roller. Great shot by Nicola Castro. Here's Tim. He was short and left. This is going to be difficult. He knows Nico's there. He's got to make something happen to stay within two. He goes with the roller. He does not like it. He's going to bleed another stroke to Nico. And Nico is the favorite to win here. He is a, a, a U.S. champion. So most of the crowd is expecting him to play good and finish out with a win. Here comes Tyler, lining up, standstill approach, perfectly next to the basket. That's how you play this hole. And Matt has the wide open right side look. Another textbook, you know, they make this hole look pretty easy and it's, it's not that easy, Kenny. Nico's roller was just crushed. He is really good at this shot, too. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes in. Oh, man. He just tosses the putter within feet of the basket. 
it's amazing the skill and technique he has from that distance with the throw putter. Tim really needs this putt to stay stay within range. Oh, and he knocks it down, and they're going crazy. Some really good camera angle footage on this coverage. And if you see, we've got a little coverage of the disc golf guy there as well. DG guy in the house. What a great putt. Tim saved know. his four there. Sorry, Kenny. I don't know what was better, the putt or the coverage. Great footage, guys. Matt Dollar, real cloud pleaser. They all love his shorts he's wearing today. Almost as bright as his personality. And money. This guy can, he is a great putter. He just doesn't miss those. That's a birdie three. Here's Nico's tap in birdie three. I missed one closer than this earlier this weekend, Kenny. He's taking his time. And knocks it in for a birdie. Picks up a stroke on Tim. Here's Tyler for his birdie. And there we have it. We're moving on. 16 long. This is the longest hole these guys are going to throw this weekend. Measuring in at 635 feet. Roller is a good shot here. But Nate actually prefers the night right hand flick. Nate is a Nate the tournament director is a forehand thrower. Tyler's not gonna like that. The key here is to get by that right side tree and Nico does it perfectly. He's gonna be in the center of the fairway. Let's catch a replay of this one, Brett. This is how you play this hole. You know, you're not gonna reach this pin. It's definitely true par four. And he throws it perfect. You know, it's just as easy to hit the gap and Heiser out to the left. It looks like Tim's throwing the forehand. You can look at how intimidating that right side tree is. It's about 150 feet off, and you have to beat that one. I like to throw an understable backhand driver on this hole, something that's going to flip over to the right and then Heiser out at the end, giving me a chance to get up and down. I agree, Kenny. I like to play it wide left and make my mistake around the tree and if, if anything over where these these spectators are on the right and Tyler is back in the woods and Ron Hubner in the red shirt was cheering him on there yeah, you can really see the gallery has been mounting as they get closer to the fi finishing hole here this, there was a monstrous turnout it's a again it's a fantastic tournament and there are going to be a lot of top professionals that are that regret not coming this year with all the cash added. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, I heard it's going to be an NT uh, next year. Dave Greenwell and Prodigy Disc are going to be sponsoring it. That's awesome. I should maybe think about starting to sign up and send Nate Heinold some cash right now. Yeah, that tournament's going to fill very quick. Not very often you see an NT in the Midwest. Here we go, and here was Nico's perfect shot. He's sitting pretty. And this is not a routine upshot. The, the basket's up on the hill. The green is fast, and you can get a roll, you know, the cut roll down the hill. And he throws a pretty nice shot. He's happy. Here's Matt Dollar. He's looking to just get close to get a par and get off this hole. And he does just that. Nice forehand shot up to the basket. There's Tyler with a long jump putt. He's going to get a four and get off this hole. Here's Tim for a birdie look. Ah, and he chains out. Quickly tap that one in, get out of the other player's way. And then here's Nico. He could pick up another stroke, and down the stretch, he's going to be stress free. Nico's starting to smell that $3,000.
There it is. I'll tell you what, Tim brought it to two, and then Nico immediately comes back and says, this is my tournament. All right, we're going to move on to the eighth hole of the final nine. Moving on to hole 17, 330 feet. This is a very, very challenging hole. This hole is birdied less than 5% of the time. I believe Dana Vici was the only player in the tournament to birdie at last round. Yeah, and if you notice there, Nico took a mid-range and just threw a nice controlled shot right up the center and took the four out of play, and he's going he's to be rewarded with, a, with an easy three. Yeah, Nico knows the difficulty of this hole, so he's just playing it smart and protecting his lead. It's a great shot by Tim. He he needs a two on this hole. And here's the replay. I mean, he's going to have a putt, and you can look at the difficulty because he's played great golf all weekend, and he still has an outside-of-the-circle putt for Deuce. Looks about a 5% to me. Yeah. Here's Nico. At this point, he's just looking to get his three, get off the hole. He might give this a little half run. I don't expect this to fly too far by. Nico's just looking to get his par and move on. There's no need to try anything here. There's Matt Dollar. Oof. And he is not going to like that one. He was handcuffed out on the outside. A little tricky stance. Here's Tyler throwing a little two finger up shot. Got the disc golf guy standing about two inches behind him, breathing down his neck. Yeah, every now and then, DG guy, he likes to get up in the action. Here's Tim. He's been putty monster this weekend and just leaves that one a little short. Off the front of the cage would have been a nice birdie. And here we go, Kenny. We're going to the final hole, the the final nine, and Nico's got a three-stroke lead. And I just don't see him making a mistake here and open the door there is some OB to the right and there's some woods to the left but it's his tournament to win yeah Nico's going to take it home here hole 18 it's the only bomber hole on the course really you just want to grip it and rip it keeping it off to the left side smart it's it's real wide open over there a lot more than you can see playing it to the right's giving yourself more challenge than you need so look for Nico to, to bomb one out there on the left side and pitch it up for a win and Nico throws just a perfect shot. Absolutely smashes that. I hope you're all enjoying this exclusive Veridisc drone footage, captured from about 150 to 200 feet above the fairway. It's a great angle. It's a beautiful par four, and notice all the spectators and cars. This was just a monster event. Well over 200 people, and we'll say it again, you better get signed up for next year because it's going to be an NT, and it was a monstrous event, and it will be a monstrous event again. Here's Tyler letting loose. He fades over a little right. Is it going to come back? And No, he hits the tree, and he's going to be out of bounds to the right. Next on the tee is Matt Dollar. Looks to be a great shot up the middle. Sold it off just a tad, but again, there's more. That's the place to make the mistake is off to the left. He's still going to have a look. A lot easier to get up and down from the left side there. Tim's approach shot now. He's throwing it over the road, trying to get in an angle at the basket. Lands a little bit short. And here's Matt's thumber. There's another nice shot. Tad short as well. And you just see here, Kenny, if you do not 
if you do not let a Here's some exclusive footage that was only captured by this drone. Unfortunately, the disc golf guy and all the other camera crews were unable to capture this. Enjoy this exclusive very dish drone footage. That's a great shot. You can see the fairway here, Kenny, and I mean, this is such a great angle. You can almost see the curvature of the earth from this view. Here's Nico. He got the, he's he's warmed up and he's got the sweater off on the last shot of the day. And he's getting ready for the award ceremony Showing because off his prodigy shirt here. This one's over. Again, I'd like to mention the three thousand dollar payout for first place. Great payout. These players came from a long way looking to win some money. You know, that's a pretty that is a great showing for Tim. Second place, two grand in the pocket. Um I'm sure he would have liked to give Nico a run for his money there on the last hole, but just wasn't meant to be an overall great weekend. I see the future's bright for him and as usual, Matt Dollar, no matter where he goes, he's in the hunt. And this final nine just wasn't very friendly to, to Tyler Horn. He's he's played really great here over the over the years and it just wasn't happening during the finals for him. He takes fourth place. But another really great successful event put on by Nate Heinhold of Peoria, Illinois and Ledgestone Insurance. Great event and here's Nico for the win. Last year he won this tournament with a little bit more of exciting of a putt from about 40 feet away captured from multiple angles but Nico again takes it home for $3,000. And now for the exclusive DG Guy footage with Nico. Two times, and both times you leave as a champion. I've got to ask, are you going to be back next year? Oh, yeah, i got to come back <laughs> to this one, man. Uh, the TD just does a great job of putting on a great show here. He brings all the people together. Uh, had a lot of great competition. The Michigan guy was running me down hard today. Hit some amazing putts, so I gotta give him, a, you know, give him his props there. He was running me down hard, so he had me nervous. He had me up against the ropes for a little while, but I'm, I'm glad I was able to play out the last few holes down the stretch and uh, get a very rewarding victory here at Ledgestone. Now you're here and you have played against some of the best, including Tim, Tyler, Matt Dollar, uh, Johnny McRae, Dana Vici, all of the, and some of your other uh, travel buddies. What would stick out as a highlight, whether it's today or any other time this weekend, besides that final putt, of course, what would be the highlight to your weekend out here? The highlight to my weekend, huh? I think just uh, all the support from the crowd, man. I felt a lot of great energy out there, so I think that was the highlight. Yeah. Yeah. Nico, you've had uh, another amazing year. You've been playing so well for the last few years. Now you're going to be thinking about USDGC in just a couple of weeks. Yeah. We're already on our way there. Yep. What are you thinking about as you move on into that event? I just want to kind of keep my head down, keep practicing hard, and uh, hopefully I could pull off the US championships this year and get a two-time out there as well. There you go. Well, we are going to present to you the ch the trophy here nice. by our tournament director, Nate Heinle. Oh, man, this is the best part. Hey, thanks buddy. a lot, Nate. Let's don't cut for you All here. Right. Thanks a lot, dude. This is the best part right here. Give it up for our tournament Go. director, Nate Heinold. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And again, your champion, Nico LaCastro. Thank you, guys. All right, the excitement's over. Where's the paycheck? Okay. <laughs> there you have it, Nico LaCastro.